Hey there, this is Johannes Tiranus, uh, speaking from the Netherlands. Uh, I came back here for a short period before I will probably go back to Sweden for the summer. I intend to do at least one video a week. Um, this one is a bit belated because I stumbled upon a topic that is so deep, so profound. It took me quite some time to think things through. I want to get down to what is really going on in our world and what the options are for European type people going forward. I was reading a book about creation myths. So we know that different peoples around the world, different cultures and languages and so on, different ethnicities and races, they tell themselves and their children a story about how the world came to be. In the West, in the Christian tradition, we say there was a, um, a father who was always there, God, who created the universe from nothing, using nothing but his own powers. And this is significant because it means that he didn't need a woman or a female force to create the world and to create the animals. And then later he creates Eve from Adam. So this is called an ex nihilo uh, creation story, a creation from nothing. There are many other creation myths that can be categorized in different ways. For example, there is also the creation from chaos. I want to get into this right away. There's also like chaos and there's like the world parent that sometimes has to be killed, like the old Wotan or Odin of the old Norse people. Uh, at some point, he's, he and his two brothers, Vili and V, Vili V and Wotan, uh, kill the giant Ymir and then use the, uh, the giant's body to create the, the world for the teeth of the giant become the mountains and so on and so forth. Specifically, I want to get into what the scientific worldview is about. At first, I misunderstood the scientific worldview because I thought that the scientific worldview, doesn't it also say that a universe came from nothing? Isn't that also an ex nihilo, a from nothing explanation? So isn't that similar to what Christianity says, except Christianity says that there's a God involved? No, not really, because in the scientific worldview, uh, you remember what they say is that the scientists say that the universe started with a big bang. They don't re personally really believe there was a big explosion of some sort, that all of a sudden there was nothing, then boom, something exploded and then everything set in motion. What they mean by the big bang is simply a sort of diffuse, indefinite form of chaos. And from this scientific chaos, the big bang, then flows the uh, laws and constants, the laws of physics and their constants. Mind you that this is still open for debate. For example, do you believe that the speed of light is a fixed constant, like a fixed speed? It's the same here as it is everywhere else in the world. Uh, turns out that until recently, every eight years or so, a committee convened to set the speed of light based on several measurements of the speed of light around the world. And uh, every eight years, the speed of light was slightly different, as though the speed wasn't really a constant, but it was fluctuating. So then how come scientists nowadays will tell you that the speed of light is a constant? Well, they can tell you this because at the last time that this committee convened, they simply decided to call it a day and said, well, this is the speed of light from now on, and they fixed it. Right? So the, the so-called constant of the speed of light was fixed in place by a committee. Fixed by committee. So it's perfectly open to debate to question the so-called constants of, uh, of the scientific worldview if they're not really constants. If everybody who tries to measure the speed of light around the world will end up having a slightly different value, doesn't that mean it's fluctuating? It doesn't mean it's changing? But I wanted to explain to you why this is so crucially important that the scientists, the sci peddling the scientific worldview, changed the ex nihilo creation by a male deity or just ex nihilo creation from nothing into creation from chaos. Because this transition, transitioning away from a belief in a creation from nothing by a god toward a belief in a big bang, a chaotic origin of everything, this undermines the entire Western mode of thought. It undermines our very psychologies. This creation myth goes to the roots of who we really are. You see, a people who believe that the universe was created from nothing by a God, for example, who has the creative power to do so, and therefore that we people created in such a God's image 
possess also some, or at least some of these creative powers, it means that we can use our minds to create new solutions and see new problems and come up with a new culture that we create ourselves. We become part of the creation, of the creative effort. But if you believe that human beings were somehow the product of a chaotic origin that then led to, that was tamed by the laws of physics and the constants, and that uh, the molecules and, and so on and the atoms somehow happen to fall together to create, to kickstart evolution and life on Earth. And that human beings are basically an afterthought at the end of our entire in the evolutionary history of the 13.62 billion years since the, uh, since the so-called Big Bang took place. What it means is, is that those people who are born as the result of a Big Bang are not thought of having Creativity. I hope you understand the difference here. Do you have creativity or is the Big Bang, the chaos, the source of creativity? Because that's what the scientists believe. They believe that in the Big Bang, there was the potential for creativity, but that everything that flows from it doesn't. Supporters of this belief in uh, evolution from chaos, from the Big Bang, they will tell you, for example, that, well, in the Christian version, where there is this God who determines what is right and wrong, it gives you a morality, um, the focus on punishing evil is the wrong focus, they say, and therefore it's better if you see good and evil basically as one thing, chaos, for some, they believe that Creativity then flows um, around us, outside of us, that we ourselves don't really possess the creative power, but that the creative powers need to be concentrated in the chaos and stay there. What you see then is with the transition from the Christian worldview where a father created the universe from nothing with using his only his powers and extending those powers to uh, the men and women he created. And in the other view, the creation from chaos, where chaos contains all the creative powers and people are just you know, rudimentary and uh, rudimentary uh, afterthoughts. Uh, the big difference here is the transition from a sort of patriarchal system where a father rules toward a sort of matriarchal system where the mother represents chaos. Um, the problem is, the problem is, you are dealing with the question of, do you want to be ruled by a morality or do you want to be ruled by rules, by rules and regulations and laws? I hope you understand that our leadership in the West isn't Christian. They're not even heathen. They are, in the best sense of the word, satanic. They are satanic in the sense that they believe that there should be no morality and that this chaos they believe they are born of should be allowed to roam freely and that they are and they basically see themselves as nothing more than matter in motion. Uh, you know, the Big Bang explosion set atoms in motion, and then all of a sudden we just happen to move our arms and, and oh, look, see, this, the Big Bang did this, right? As though I don't have a free will of my own to move my body and speak the words that I think of. To transition away from having a God who represents free will and passes it on to his creation towards a creation from chaos in the scientific worldview where people are not thought of having a free will, but are the, uh, are the, are the atoms set in motion by a sort of form of chaos. And then I realized something, this conflict between order and chaos, where you know, the Christian God orders the world into male and female, and uh, all the animals with their own kind, and so on and so forth, and the heavens shall be parted from the, from the earth, and so on and so forth. Whereas with chaos, all of it is diffuse. And here's where also that transgender ideology plays a part. It's the, the sort of scientists who buy into the Big Bang Theory, they also believe that uh, man and woman ought to be something diffuse, something, something androgynous, something confused, I would say, uh, they believe that is a better state of affairs than to have a distinct separation between men and women. Now, what does any of this have anything to do with the survival of our peoples going forward into the future? If you look at our present time, about say the last, just the last 50 years or even the last decade, what is really going on in our world? We've got mass immigration, mass immigration of all the different kinds of people around the world moving into Europe and North America and elsewhere to live among us in our cities. What is that called? It's chaotic, isn't it? It's chaos. Um, 
Also, the claim that there are now 72 or 69 different genders or whatever, uh, as though people can just make up their own genders. What they're doing is they're taking that, that earlier notion of male and female and ripping it apart into you know, thousands of different variations. That is also chaos. Also, the, the measures we've been living under, the, you know, the lockdowns, I can't say too much about it because I want to put this on YouTube, but you know, the, the measures that we, have, we are forced to live by, they introduce them, then they abolish them, then they reintroduce them, then they worsen them, then they lighten them a little bit, only to worsen them a little more. Uh, and then they abolish them again. But then three months later, you have everything is reintroduced again. Uh, this is chaos. I'm trying to explain to you, this is the main point of my talk, is it's deliberate. The Western elites are not Christian. They are satanic in this sense. They believe in uh, a world that comes from chaos, the Big Bang, as the scientists call it. And they are trying to prime our peoples to believe in chaos. And the way to get our peoples to believe in chaos is to continuously push for chaotic social order, uh, chaotic social conditions. So mass migration, multiculturalism, diversity, uh, the LGBT, the genders, uh, the gender confusion, um, uh, economic measures, uh, ups and downs in, in your life. Uh, you know, anything that has been going on in the past decade or past 50 years serves that purpose. It's deliberate. A lot of these measures are perfectly deliberately designed to make no sense. They're designed to be chaotic so that people, children who grow up now, you know, one day they have to, and the next day they don't, and then three weeks later they have to go back, right? It's deliberately designed to make no sense so that we all experience the sense of this sort of overwhelming chaos. But it's artificial, it's not real. But then, say 10 years from now, say they can keep doing this for the next 10 years, right? Uh, they keep adding more and more confusing, more and more uh, conflict, more and more chaos. At some point, the youngest generations, the children who are now two years old, they don't know any better. All they know is that the world they grew up in was totally chaotic. And this is where that notion of the new world order comes from. The new world order is a order that comes from chaos. It starts with the chaos that we are literally living through now, right now, that is being designed by our ruling classes, our journalists, our politicians, and of course their handlers. Because I do suspect a sort of priestly caste, a satanic priestly caste that is behind all this, that is orchestrating the chaos, and it has to last for about 20 or 30 years to really grain it into the brains of our youngsters, of the two-year-olds and the five-year-olds, so that they don't know any better than that life is chaos. And once they don't know any better, once the older generations who grew up with clear order, understanding the male and female, and you know, east to their own, uh, you know, each, each their own country, and so on and so forth. Once that has died off, and you are left with generations of children who grew up with chaos, then basically the quote-unquote Satanists have won. They have then succeeded in transforming a world, and the entire Western world, from a somewhat patriarchal order into a matriarchal system of chaos. What I don't hear the Jordan Petersons talk about is that there is a third way. Just because these two concepts are so big, order or chaos, and you feel like you have to choose, do you want to go back to the patriarchal system of the Christians, or you want to have you know, chaos, chaos and, you know, and diddle kids and whatever, right? Uh, there's a third way. That is the way of common sense. Common sense means simply that we, that the common people get to live in a world that they can make sense of using their own senses, using their own mind and thoughts and, and feelings and, and also their logic and their reasoning, their rationality to make sense of their own world themselves. So there's three options here. There's order, there's chaos, and there's common sense. And to put all this that I just told you together in a sort of uh, political frame, uh, today, you know, I'm European, so I live in Europe. So from my European perspective, I look at the United States empire which used to be Christian, which used to give us the patriarchy and the order and the things that made sense. There was a lot of common sense in the United States, but there no longer is because the new leadership, the present leadership of the United States, uh, they are the chaos thinkers. The, the, I call them Satanists because they believe in creation from chaos. 
they want to deliberately distort our reality so that we don't know any better. And then, of course, they can step in and present to us their new world order, which will be probably we're going to move from having uh, heterosexual relations to having no such relations at all. And everybody is somewhat gay. They say, oh, you can't be straight. You can only be like 10% straight or 20% straight or 80% straight or 90% straight. They, they start turning everything into a scale where there used to be definite understanding that there's male and female, they're going to turn that into something so diffuse that they'll say you can't be male or female, you're just a little bit female or a little bit male, and there's no such thing as a definite uh, pinpointing of what it is. That's what they're after. They want to create the new world order where there is basically a uh, gender neutral society that they can control perfectly. But there are alternatives. Russia, for example, represents a sort of patriarchal system. But I have to warn you, I don't support Russia law. See, I don't support the American leadership because they're degenerates right now. They used to be good, but they no longer are. The Russia, Russian leadership, uh, they're working on their Eurasian empire dream. They want to basically take all of Eurasia, that includes Europe, Russia, Kazakhstan, and maybe even China and India and the Muslim world. The sorts of men like Vladimir Putin and also like Dugin, and others, they understand very well that if Russia could somehow, if the white Russians could somehow align the loyalty of the Islamic hordes, meaning the Islamic crescent, that's Turkey, and that's, you know, Chechnya, and so on and so forth, if they could align Islam with Russian interests, then they could possibly take Europe and take Europe away from the American Empire. Uh, Western Europe, mind you, at, at this point is part of the United States Empire since ever since 1945 because, well, our economies collapsed and we needed the Americans to help us rebuild our economies. And we're very grateful for it. But then, of course, Russia is eyeing the prize. The Russian leadership, you know, the, the priestly class that they have over there is trying to take Europe from America and so establish itself as the superpower in the world, a Eurasian superpower. But again, I'm presenting to you a black or white story as though there's only the US empire and then this Russian Eurasian thing. The problem is that I don't support either. I don't support the Russia's dream of Eurasian empire and I don't support US empire. Why not? Because US empire right now is going to push the transgenderism nonsense, the gender neutral society. It's going to mangle our children's minds. And that is why I want to, at the end of this little video, I want to simplify things again. I want to make things very fundamental again, very basic. That's what I meant when I said there's a third way, which is common sense. It's the alternative to both order and chaos. Bureaucratic order with senseless rules that you have to follow because that doesn't make sense. But also a chaotic order where there are no rules and everybody can just do whatever they want. You're promoting mental health problems. You're promoting uh, you know, mental illnesses. The third way is the way of common sense. So let me describe it as follows. Just a few days ago, I was having lunch at some place. The place was packed with people, with some of the older people over 50. But the staff were about four or five young women, I'd say women under 25, age 20 to 25 or so. And I noticed something about them. See, I'm a very perceptive fellow. I noticed something that these women in their kindness and the way that they took care of everybody's requests, the way they prepared people's sandwiches and their lunch is that these women were very kind, uh, good giving women, but they're not the brightest. They didn't go to university to sell sandwiches, obviously. They didn't study uh, accounting. These type of women, all the sort of women you find in the West right now, who are working these kind of jobs, the service jobs, as waitresses or servers or something like it, they all want the same thing. They all dream of having a big house with a big kitchen and a whole bunch of kids running around. And they're being exploited right now. Their desire for this is being exploited. So they work these service jobs, working for an employer, doing the sort of things that they would rather do at home in their own big house with a big family. But they can't. Here in the West, women can hardly have one or two or maybe three children. You can't have big families with five, six or seven children anymore. 
at the same time, of course, our borders are wide open. And for some reason, women who can have five children in their homeland, say in Turkey or in Central Africa, they can come to Europe and they can, be, they can find housing here. But we can't have large families anymore. There's no, the worst thing that could happen to us now is if, say, half or maybe two-thirds of our men side with the U.S. empire interests and they start fighting for spreading degeneracy around the world. Or that, say, a third or half of our people would side with the Russians and they start to fight for the Russian interests against our own people. You see, the whole, the whole story about Islam is very simple. Russia thinks they can use or bound Islam to its interests and then use the Muslim hordes to invade Europe at some point. Mind you, I'm going to make a prediction. I predict that Turkey, which is now part of NATO but not part of the EU, I think Turkey is going to switch sides and they're going to all of a sudden, out of the blue, they're going to side with Russia against Europe. And when that happens, Europe has a big problem because uh, Turkey has half a million, 500,000 soldiers trained by NATO with the best NATO equipment. In Europe, of course, realizing our, our leadership, realizing that uh, Putin may be using Islam to conquer Europe. Therefore, we must also integrate Islam into Europe in order to try to get Islam on our side. But these strategies aren't working. You cannot make your future dependent on the success of some other people. The real deal here is the third way option is that the solution to this conflict between American West and Russian East is that Europe can transform itself into a backbone. We become the backbone of the world and we start to play both sides. As Europeans, there's no reason for us to push the chaos culture coming out of the USA nowadays, that satanic culture. There's no reason for us to support a fusion of Russia and Islam and have our countries invaded. What we need to do is, whatever we can do, is to help our women to have large families again. See, this is a very simple strategy. We do whatever we can do so that our own women can have proper housing, big kitchens, and lots of kids. And we can do this by playing both sides. We can pretend to be for the Russians for a little while, just so long as we get what we want. And then we'll switch sides, we'll support you know, the American degeneracy a little while, just so that we can get what we want. Uh, it doesn't matter anymore. We need to become a sort of apolitical, an apolitical movement that is only looking after our own interests. Thank you.